And what's up, guys? It's me, Doc, from SampleKings.com. And of course, most of you already heard about it. They have this new update, which is 11.6.6 or 2.11.6.6. And that's from my computer software here. So I'm going to do a little lesson or actually just look at the Flavor Pro in this video. So I heard it. I was going through it. I liked it because I feel that they need this inside of uh, the MPC software. The sounds are kind of light and they need to do more uh, lo-fi. I think the problem for them has been that Roland came out with the SP404 Mark II. I did a video on it. I like that machine because it was low profile. It was simple to use and it was nothing to it, you know. And I said, this is kind of cool. And I like the idea that it's low because my problem has always been I like boom bap. I like stuff to hit hard and snap on a snare drum and nice crispy hi-hats. And the world has gone to this pristine sample idea. Samples that are clean, uh, soft like the MPC, makes really clean stuff. But I don't need that. I can get that from anything else I got, whether it's going to be Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton Live. I need something to counter that. And this new software, the Flavor Pro, will help us. Let's get started now. I got some break beats here. Let's get to the business. Here it is right here. I got something here. Where's it at? Oh. I'm looking at beats. I want to try it on break beats. Oh, yeah. See, I like this beat here. It's chunky. See how chunky that is? It's like ridiculous. Okay, let's grab this. I'm gonna throw it here in my little bin here. Cool. And that's like 106 that should be for looping. What else I got here? Oh, I like that. That's, I gotta, I work, we're going with that right now. We're gonna work with that right now. Okay, so I'm gonna go here in my tempo and make sure this is 106 and press enter. Okay, because these beats, I've already got them locked in to the right tempo. But now I want to go to look at the beats. So I'm going to go to here where it says peanut butter. Boom. Oh, look at that. It changed just being in here because I have the flavor on. Let's turn the flavor off. Get the difference? That's the original. Okay, let's go back to the loop first, though. Let's, there you go. So this is the beginning of that beat. I want to come over here and just get this to move on top of it. So I'm going to loop it. It'll loop perfectly in time. I like that beat. Okay, I'm going back here to the top again. And so how long is this beat gonna be? I have no idea. This loop sounds like it's long. So it's gotta be about, let's say at least eight bars. So I'm gonna squeeze this out to eight bars. That's eight bars. So I wanna put a little thing here to make sure it starts on the one. Mm, yeah, okay, let's go back here. Now, let's pop this on. Whoa, film noir. Okay, let's get down to make it like an SP1200. Oh, damn. I am feeling that. Look how chunky that sounds. Oh, I can ride like a horse, man. That's nice. Okay, so you've got it up, you're playing with it, and then you can see there are other things you can actually do here. So, What's happening here is that we have pitch, distortion, digital, vinyl, volume, and timbre. Now you can see obviously here pitch is off, volume is off, and these are presets made by air. So normally I prefer to use a preset because that means that the person or the company that made it, this is the best way it's going to sound with this particular setting. So I prefer to use all the presets first and then sort of develop an idea. So here we can see we have the record here, right? And you see once you move the rate, the little record icon here changes around. And you can hear a little bit of that. I can come here digitally, I can give the bit depth, and you can see it changes for the bit depth. Now here I have the model for distortion. So this is transformer. I can use amp classic. Whoa! Now we're changing it. That's amp heavy. Let's go after raining there. That's tubes. Like the tubes. Ooh, the vinyl sort of darkens it up. Speaker. Diodes. Synth. Digital. So I did like the original, which was the transformer, I believe. 
So I can also lower the intensity. Increase the width. Increase the gain. I can come here for the timbre, and I have a lot more choices here as you can see. I can go studio old, studio small, studio tiny, studio large. So I'm a larger there, right? I can go radio too. Not much of a problem. Oh, look at this. For the phone. See how it just sounds like a phone there? Like the bottoms are just crushed. Let's go somewhere we might like this at. Let's try neutral. I love that beat. Oh, God, I love that beat. Okay, I gotta, I gotta stop this. I'm getting personal now. Okay, I just gotta stop that one. Okay, next beat up is gonna be the top 10. Let's hit this one now. Let's see, this is gonna be 100 and what? This is 106. That's 106 too. This is good. So I'll play this from top. Oh yeah, the classic. Okay, so we're FP1200 here now under the lo-fi. Let's go to MPC3000. Okay, darkens it up. We're losing the highs a little bit, but it's just we're not getting that other frequency. Let's look at the sample. That's right, the sample's good. back to the home so as you can see or else as I'm working here I'm set up here I've got the pad mixer on here right here so I've got pads on or off I'll come to this pad right here you'll see the sound coming up here and this is going into the overall program see this little program this is the program here it's going into this program I can turn this down and turn it back up you know where it's coming in from right so then I have the, of course, the Pro here. Now I prefer to use a compressor now and then too. So I'll put a compressor on. I'm using this one's hardened. I like that. I'm going to like to hear, and I'll turn it on. Let me see how the compressor works with it too as well. So here the attack's pretty good. I'll bring my mix down to my compressor. I'm sort of skipping and not looping, but I don't care about that. We're just here to try and get an idea of how the Flavor Pro works on different loops. Okay, so now I can do the same thing here, but what I want to do is find something that might work for me. The noise is coming from vinyl. I betcha. There it is. Vinyl adds noise. What does the hum do? Well, adds hum. That was a dumb question. Okay, we're going here. Distortion. I like that distortion. Let's try some more distortion stuff. Let's go to here. Heavy. Oh man. That's too tinny there. That's like, that's not me. Let's try some tubes. Differential. Whoa. That's kind of ill right there. Okay, let's try something else. We're still in lo fi. Let's go with corrupted tape noise. Of course, it's right here. So some sounds, you'll figure out that you hear the noise is coming from vinyl, right? Pops and clicks will be from vinyl. You'll see the vinyl, of course, right here, and you know it's a problem with it. And you know what's being used because you'll always see these icons for each one being used, whether it's pitch, distortion, digital, vinyl, volume, or timbre. So it's kind of cool. I'm gonna go in here and timbre and get my studio a little bigger. Okay, good. Now, get the gain up. Got the idea. So the crackles are here. I may just turn this off. So you can turn stuff off, right? I can turn off any one of these parameters off. I don't turn that off. I don't like that. And get what I want for flavor. I can widen it up here. I may even take a compressor here and go to my compressor and get more bump out of it, right? Or pull the mix down between the real and not real or bring more of the compression in or turn the compressor off I get an idea of what's happening and how it's affecting that sound so I have to use other effects with the sound to make sure it's working how it works 
and I can imagine what the compressor would sound like with or without it. But I like this, it's pretty cool. It's doing some pretty cool stuff to the sound. Now I haven't talked about the pitch yet, so let's go over this pitch idea. You hear the pitch is like wavering like? This is just right on time. See that just crushed it out, that just crushed it. It got too strong. And let's pull the drifting down. Let's pull down this fast. Let's get more of a slower rate going on here. We'll sit in the middle a little bit more. As you can see, the pitch icon is changing, telling you you're doing something different. I can come here and vary it as well. Vary this as well. And I do this too with I'll do this too with the pitch. And you can hear it sort of pitch change. That's kind of it. Let's stop that. Let's just cut off here, actually. And we're going to do the next one. This is a 100. So I come to here. These are not even working at 100. Let's go ones anyway. These aren't even working to loop them like I wanted to loop, but that doesn't make a difference. We're just playing around with the sounds. Let's first get the init going on. Noise going. Let's turn the intensity off. Now I got to the intensity at zero. It's playing the sound the way it is with nothing going through it, right? And we can see here too. I can do this with it also as well. You can change the EQ here. Look at that. Nothing. So low pass filters on or high pass filters way up, getting the highs. Now we're getting all the low end. Like this here, right? So you can change that with this EQ right here. We're just doing through high, just doing a high pass filter and a low pass. That's, that's all it really is. This is the output on this side, EQ on that side. So I'll widen this out. And now we can hear the whole thing coming in. And this is important for you to understand too. So now I can turn my intensity back up to hear the original effect, which is actually this, which is just this uh, init. And now we're gonna go to vintage drums. Some more kick. So this noise level, I don't want. And I'll turn this off. I don't like this. Someone's giving me. The, oh, that's it. Distortion was doing that. Okay, so once you find out what's doing the wrong thing for you, you can sort of change it a little bit more. Nice. And it does widen the width out a little bit more there. It's pretty cool. Okay, that one's good. Cool. That's cool. Now I want to try the this one here. And this is supposed to be 119. Let me get this here. 119 BPM. Whoa. Oh yeah. That's like rock and roll right there. That's the meaning of rock and roll, dude. Word. Nah. I'm feeling that. Get out of my way type beat. I'm coming. Yeah. Oh, this is nice. Let's try something else. Let's go with this vintage drum. Oh, God. What the hell happened? Right, that's like hell. Drum loop. This is the Drum Loop VHS. Let's go with drums here. Let's go to wide loop. Oh, nice. You can hear it. I can hear the headset here where it's going. I got left and right here. It's kind of ill. Left and right on the mono track is, and that's real. But you can see here, you go back to sample. Oh, it's stereo track. Excuse me. Shut my mouth. That's just screaming my head up. That's hot. I hear the stereo better. Nice. Okay, I gotta try something out here. Let's turn this off. Oh, that's it. Okay. Stereo right here, that's where it's going. Nice, let's get the rate a little bit more. That pitch is kind of cool. How about some distortion? Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh man, damn, that is raw. I kind of like it, okay, you're not having some fun here. Uh, let's put old speakers. 
And once you change it, of course, you get the icon right there. I can't complain. The Flavor Pro sounds good on breakbeats. You decide at home. Okay, that's good.